Seven things you probably didn't know, you need to know. I'm Jamie East and this, this is the Smart Seven. Good morning, it's Monday the 14th of March and it's Commonwealth Day. And a big happy birthday to Michael Caine, Quincy Jones, Billy Crystal and Simone Biles. The weekend saw more Russian attacks on Ukraine, including a 30-missile attack on a military base near the western city of Lviv, which is only 15 miles from the Polish border. The attacks on the Yavoriv International Centre for Peacekeeping and Security, which hosts NATO training for Ukrainian troops, left at least 35 dead. Even as the attacks continue, so do peace talks, with some optimism from both sides and further talks over video link due today. Ukrainian President Zelensky had another busy weekend of diplomacy, speaking to Boris and to the Czech president, while also visiting wounded Ukrainian troops in hospital and awarding medals. He had an update on Russian losses too. He says more than 13,000 Russians have been killed, more than in both Chechen wars, and he vows to fight on. He also says a 100-ton humanitarian aid convoy is fighting its way to the city of Mariupol, which the Red Cross says is in dire straits. There was support too from an unexpected source as the Pope weighed in during his weekly address in Rome to urge the Russians to stop the attacks on civilians. This week, the city of Mariupol, a city that bears the name of the Virgin Mary, became a martyr city in the harrowing war that is ravaging the Ukraine. All that is needed is to stop the unacceptable armed aggression before it reduces cities to cemeteries. As the Russian attacks continue, including shootings of civilians and several journalists, Labour leader Sakir Starmer was asked whether he believes that Russia is in fact guilty of war crimes. Yes. What I've seen already amounts to war crimes, um, and I think it's very important that he's held to account and is responsible, and all those that are acting with him know that they too will be held to account. American journalist and videographer Brent Renault was one of those shot and killed this weekend by Russian troops near Irpin, just outside of Kiev. His colleague Juan Orandando was with him when they were ambushed. He's speaking here while in the emergency room in the Kiev hospital and isn't aware that Brent didn't make it. And we crossed the checkpoint and they started shooting at us. Um, so the driver turned around and they kept shooting. It's two of us. My friend is Brent Renault. And how is he? I don't know. You don't know what happened to him? He was, I, I saw him sh- being shot in the neck and we got split. As the evacuation of Ukrainian civilians continues, the UK's reluctance to offer refuge to a significant number of the two and a half million who fled without a proper visa process has drawn increasing criticism. Liberal Democrat leader Ed Davis says it's just not good enough. Pretty Patel's response to this humanitarian catastrophe, the biggest in Europe since World War II, is utterly shameful. She has answered desperation with delays. Ireland's already taken in five and a half thousand refugees, and when Irish tea shot Michal Martin was asked about security checks on the BBC's Sunday morning show, he said it's really not been the priority. Our primary impulse is to assist those fleeing war. What we're witnessing on our screens every evening is really shocking people, and there's huge human empathy there, obviously. Now with the government announcing a funding scheme which could see UK households offered £350 a month to house refugees, maybe the tide is finally turning. One household that's ready to take part is the Cumberbatches. Benedict was on the red carpet for the BAFTAs and he's calling for everyone to get involved. Everyone needs to do as much as they can. I think already today the news has broke that there's been a record number of people volunteering to take people into their homes and I hope to be part of that myself. And also obviously donating to charities who can help people in a very real way on the ground, either in Poland or just over the border if it's safe to do so. As sanctions tighten on Russian oligarchs and the spotlight on Russian money in London and the UK grows brighter, there have been more questions about the process through which Eugenie Lebedev was awarded a peerage. Both he and the government insist that there was nothing untoward in the evening standard owner and son of a former KGB agent becoming Lord Lebedev and Michael Gove was offering his full support on the Sunday morning talk shows. I've met um, Lord Lebedev as the Prime Minister has. Um, at no point did anyone ever say to me that it would be inappropriate uh, to meet him and to um, to talk to him. Uh, Lord Lebedev has been clear through the pages of the Evening Standard, the newspaper of which he is proprietor, that he wholeheartedly disapproves of this conflict. Uh, he's been critical of Vladimir Putin's actions. Still to come on the Smart 7, it's all going the BAFTAs and Thomas Tuchel is warming up the dad taxi. Right after this. Welcome back.
It was a full weekend of fixtures in the Premier League. Man United's Cristiano Ronaldo single-handedly defeated Spurs on Saturday with a hat-trick that took him to the top of the all-time scoring charts. Liverpool won at Brighton, Arsenal beat Leicester and Everton lost at Wolves. Chelsea were fortunate 1-0 winners against Newcastle and even as stories of the club's credit cards being frozen circulated, boss Thomas Tuchel was determined that come what may after the sanctions on owner Abramovich, they'd make it to France for Tuesday's Champions League game against Lille. No, my last information is that we have a plane, but... uh and we can go by plane and uh, can go back by plane. If not, we go by train. If not, we go by bus. If not, I try for seven-seater, honestly. <laughs> I, and I will do. Yeah, you can uh, mark my words. I will do. I will arrive there. It was a big night at the BAFTAs, although host Rebel Wilson didn't entirely nail it. The Best Actor award went to Will Smith, who's on a bit of a roll for his role in King Richard. Welsh actor Joanna Scanlon won Best Actress for After Love, and Paul Thomas Anderson won Best Screenplay for Licorice Pizza. His award was picked up by rock and roll royalty, Radiohead's Johnny Greenwood and the film star and Haim's Alana Haim. Paul is going to be very excited to win this. Not least because it means I've been forced to come and give a very awkward and inarticulate speech on his behalf, which you will find very funny. So, um, what would you like to say, Alan? What would I like to say? Power of the Dog won both Best Director and Best Picture, and Benedict Cumberbatch picked up the award on Jane Campion's behalf, and he wasn't at all bitter about not winning himself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, hold on a second. BAFTA, I'd like... Oh, no, damn it, that's, that's my speech. Oops. <laughs> You don't lose to Will Smith, you win being in his company. The death was announced on Sunday night of BAFTA and Oscar-winning actor William Hurt. He was probably best known for his Oscar-winning role in Kiss of the Spider-Woman, along with Body Heat, Children of a Lesser God and Broadcast News. He'd been diagnosed with terminal cancer in 2018, and his death was announced by his son one week before his 72nd birthday. Here he is in that Oscar-nominated broadcast news opposite Holly Hunter as the charismatic and deeply flawed news anchor Tom Grunick. Rest in peace, William. You're an amazing woman. What a feeling having you inside my head. It's like indescribable. You knew just when to feed me the next line. The second before I needed it. There was like a rhythm we got into. It was like great sex. (laughs) This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Dogs.